Welcome back to class, students. For today's lesson, we are going to be discussing U.S. currency. This is a very important thing to learn about. There's just so much depth to this subject that the deeper you go into learning about U.S. currency and how it's formed, the more likely you are to get a visit from certain men in suits. So, for now, we are going to discuss the coins of the United States and just the one dollar bill, just to show how many coins you need to equal a dollar. So, we are going to discuss which figures are on each coin and what on the back side of the coin it represents. So. Let us begin with the less used coins, the half dollar coin. This half dollar coin features John Fitzgerald Kennedy's head on one of, if not the biggest coin in the US currency. We also have on the reverse side, the eagle with its wings outstretched representing freedom, holding on to a bushel of arrows and a bushel of and an olive branch. This eagle represents liberty, strength, and freedom. This half dollar coin is hardly ever used, which is kind of curious to me considering how JFK is one of the most liked presidents in history, U.S. history, and also the half dollar is just so convenient to use when something is literally just 50 cents. Now, in order to get to one dollar, you need two half dollars to equal one dollar. Each dollar equals a hundred cents. So, one of these coins is 50 cents and the other coin is also 50 cents equaling 100 cents next we have a very curious coin probably my favorite coin the quarter and the front face it features george washington shirtless there is some speculation as to why it is that they would feature george washington shirtless on the front of the quarter now as the name reflects it is a quarter of a dollar, so it is one-fourth of one dollar, meaning that its value is 25 cents. You need four quarters to equal one dollar, because a quart is another way to say one-fourth. Now, the reason this is probably my favorite coin is because on the back, it always has different scenes of American history or symbolism. So on this example, we have the construction or maintenance of Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. Likewise, we also have the common phrase, in God we trust, on the quarter, along with the phrase or the word liberty etched on the face of the quarter. I'm trying to see if there it is. We also have the Latin phrase, e pluribus unum, on the quarter as well. E pluribus unum is a Latin phrase that says, that means one of many, many of one, many of one, e pluribus unum, from many one. So basically, the 13 colonies unified into one union. So, a pluribus unum reflects the union that the United States is under. Which is a good thing, but not the way it currently is. We will get to that once we start covering the penny. However, we move on to the dime. The dime features the Eleanor Roosevelt's face on the front. It has since featured his face, I believe, since 1946, prior to his face being etched as the 
final draft for the dime, it used to have Lady Liberty, or it should have had Lady Liberty's face on the dime. Franklin D. Roosevelt was... He was a president. On the back of the dime, we have once again the same Latin phrase, a pluribus unum, and we have three symbols to represent different characteristics of the United States. We have an olive branch, we have a torch, and we have an oak branch. The olive branch represents peace, the torch represents strength, and the oak branch, I believe, represents liberty. And the dime is also of a ten cent value. So it is one tenth of a dollar. It is ten percent of one hundred percent. That makes it confusing. It is one tenth of a dollar. So you're going to need ten of these cents, ten of these coins, to equal one dollar. Or, as is illustrated in this example, you're going to need five dimes to equal the half dollar. Next we have the nickel. The nickel features Thomas Jefferson's face. Thomas Jefferson was the third president of the United States. Now, what's curious is that on the back of the nickel we have his personal home, Monticello. Some people erroneously think that it's the White House or even the Capitol, but no, it's Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's personal house that he built himself. Now, the phrase a pluribus unum is once again etched onto the back of the nickel above his Monticello home. The nickel is five cents of a dollar, or as is illustrated here, five nickels to equal one quarter and you're going to need four quarters to equal one dollar. And on the face of the nickel we have the same values promoted in all of the currency, which is liberty and believing in God. So, something that is worthy of remembering is that currency is the value of the country, is the value that the country decides to trade. So, when all of your currency espouses the same values of liberty, peace, freedom, strength, you're basically stating that these values are the most valuable traits within your nation. Finally, we get to the penny. The penny is the lowest denomination of currency we have as coinage. It is only worth one cent. There is nothing that is of lesser value than one cent in the currency that we have in the United States. The penny features Abraham Lincoln's face down to his chest, actually. All the other pennies just feature the profile above the shoulders or even down to the neck of each president chosen to represent that currency. But Theodore Roosevelt in roughly 1911 decided to put Abraham Lincoln's portrait on the penny, despite the fact that there was a sense of dislike for that choice because people thought it improper and disrespectful to put portraits on their own currency. I don't know why though, but it does kind of make sense. Now, the penny, once again, is the lowest denomination of coinage we have in the U.S. So you might wonder then, why did they choose these different presidents on their selected value systems? Oh, and before we get to that point, we have the United States shield on the back of the penny, typically. We can also have the, I believe, Lincoln Memorial on the back of the penny as well. So the different portraits or Images found on the backs of pennies vary, and there's some pennies that are worth way more than just one cent if you find them old enough. 
you see our currency was made out of valuable metals and valuable metals that now it currently is not made out of. So if you find an old penny made out of way more valuable metals than our current pennies, those pennies are actually worth more than one cent. But we return back to the reasoning for why I personally think they put Abraham Lincoln on the penny. Abraham Lincoln ended up winning the Civil War, thus creating a strong federal government that then forced everyone under the federal banking system. This was something that most American presidents, if not all American presidents, had previously fought wars against because they wanted to maintain local banking systems so that way the people had more control over their own currency and legislation. So it makes sense that Abraham Lincoln, who federalized the banking system and ended up federalizing government to such a point where now everyone was beholden to what they used to call tyrannical rule, because they used to consider Abraham Lincoln to be very tyrannical, it would make sense that they would then put Abraham Lincoln on the lowest common denomination of currency that is very common for those who own the banking system to pick up. Likewise, I believe that they put Thomas Jefferson on the nickel because he was a very significant US figure. He was the one who helped to pen the Declaration of Independence, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And he was a key figure as a founding father of the country. FDR is another one who kind of belongs in Abraham Lincoln's ilk. He helped to win World War II, despite the fact that it was really the Red Army that kind of beat back the Axis powers and then ended up winning World War II. But if it had not been for America's inclusion, the Western Front would have been a lot easier for the Axis powers to defeat. So naturally, considering how the consequences of the Allies winning World War II has led to the circumstances we find ourselves in society, they have then enshrined FDR in our currency, which kind of spits in the face of in God we trust. But we move along. We then have George Washington, the general who fought in the American Revolution. Once again, another very notable, if not one of the most notable, American figures in US history on the quarter. This choice makes complete sense to me. There is not even a need to explain why it is that George Washington is on the quarter. It pretty much should be intuitive. And then once again, we have JFK's lovely smiling face on the half dollar. JFK, along with Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, are probably some of the most deserving presidents to be on our currency. Lincoln and FDR, they're mostly on the US currency because they sold out the nation to foreign interests, but aside from them, that is about the lesson of US currency. Thank you for joining me today to learn about how our coinage works. We will Perhaps maybe even cover why it is that our coins, except the penny, interesting, has little ridges on the sides of them. That's to prevent coin clipping, which is still funny because they don't have that on the penny, but that's because most people just wouldn't clip a penny. It's just such a low common, it, it's the low, it's the least valuable coin to collect. Regardless, I hope you have a lovely day and take care. Bye-bye.